Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com. It's a big day. We have a major Lightroom mobile update, adding some things that we've been waiting a long time for. We'll start with a new interface for the iPad. So the iPhone already had this very cool new, more modern, more Lightroom-like interface, and now finally the iPad does as well. We're still waiting on the Android interface for Android tablets. So, so far it still has the old interface, the iPad already has the new interface and the editing is much, much, much more Lightroom light. Let's take a look. Let's just tap on an image right here. And of course, when you see a red dot, that is my finger on screen so you can see what I'm working with. And here's the new interface. The things line up there just like they always did on the right side, the image on the left, the develop module type stuff on your right. And we have color and uh, oh, what's, what's this? Whoa, sharpening. That's right, sharpening, the whole sharpening segment is here now, sharpening and noise reduction. It's all right there. So that's brand new to the iPad version to Lightroom Mobile. Uh, also, uh, and, and on the phone as well, on the iPhone as well, it's there. The really big stuff, or the really big thing, is of course the adjustment brush. That's the one thing. We had the radial tool, we had the gradient tool, the graduated filter. We've been dying for the brush and it's here. It's very, very well implemented. So right up here at the top, you have a selective edits button and it brings up the selective edits. And over in the top left corner, see that little plus sign, click right there. And instead of just being the radial and the linear gradient, oh, look at that, there's a brush. Just tap on it and you've got three controls over here. If you tap and hold, you've got the control of the size of your brush. You can scroll up or down and you get a visual indication on screen for the size. We're gonna make our brush small. We've got the amount of feather, so you can control that again by dragging up and down. And of course, you've got the soccer ball, which actually means the amount of flow. I'm gonna leave mine set at 50% like I normally do. All right, how do you paint? You use your finger, it's just like you always did. But they've done an interesting thing in the way they implement it. So let's go to the light here, and you'll see all the controls that have to do with light. Exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow, whites and blacks. I'm going to darken the exposure. Now you see the exposure darken as I'm dragging, even though I haven't painted yet. It gives you a preview so you can kind of get a better idea how dark you want it. And when you let go with your finger, it goes back to normal. So when you start painting with your finger, then it uses that amount of darkness right there. Now you have a mask that's on here. You can choose to have the mask on or off. You click the little tap the little three buttons up at the top. You can have the red overlay that tint or never show the red overlay and just let it paint as you go. And of course, anytime a edit button is, uh, is uh, activated, you can just go and darken and paint other areas and just change your settings and things. And then if you wanted to brighten an area to create a new one, hit the plus sign, hit the brush. This time I'm gonna go brighten, maybe the roof a bit. And you notice that when I'm, when I'm dragging the slider, it does brighten. And then when I let go and it goes back to normal and then you'll paint in the brighter areas. And I made my brush a little too small, but uh, you get the idea. And there we go. We're seeing some shadows up there in the roof. That's okay. And that's a little too bright, but I can go and adjust that down. So of course here I've been using my finger to, to paint. If you have a device like a phone that has support for 3D touch, then you have pressure sensitivity. If you have an iPad Pro, then you have pressure sensitivity through the Apple Pencil, so that's pretty awesome. All right, besides that, there's also been some improvements to Lightroom Mobile's built-in camera. One of the improvements is a way to help you keep your camera level. So if you, you know, the little haptic feedback, that's what they call it, where your phone kind of goes, Bloom, you know, it kind of kind of moves a little to let you know. It doesn't vibrate, but it just kind of goes, Bloom. right? Well, they've got that now. As you try to steady your device, when you're steady, you can choose to have this turned on. Bloom. It'll let you know by making that sound, that kind of sounds like that, uh, but much quieter and you feel it instead of hear it, that's one. Another thing they added was clipping warnings inside the phone live. So while you're shooting, if it's, you start to hit something that's clipping, something that's gotten too bright, it's gonna blow out the highlights, you'll get the zebras, the little zebras that you'll get in some cameras to let you know before you even shoot that you've got a highlight problem. So those are some new things that they added to the phone that I think make a big difference. So big day today, big upgrade, and this is important, I created a brand new class that comes out today, Tuesday, July 18th, and it is called Lightroom Mobile, 
from start to finish. And I take you through the entire latest version. We go through all the different stuff and there's so much to it. There's so much cool stuff. If you haven't expanded the power of Lightroom on your desktop to start using mobile, Watch this class and it will open up an entirely new world of fun for you. So go check it out. It's at kelby1.com. Uh, if you're a member, of course, just go watch it. If you're not a member yet, go take the 10-day free trial. You can watch the class right now and get up to speed fast on the latest version of Lightroom Mobile. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.